Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Prepping Foraging Survival Series. Tonight we're going to be talking about the American Lotus. The American Lotus was one of the main food sources for the Native Americans. And it is found east and south of the Rockies uh, and also in parts of California. While the root, the shoots, the flowers, and the young seeds are all edible, it was the root that the Indians would count on to get them through the winter. The species can produce more than 8,000 long stem yellow flowers per acre, and its empty seed pods are often found in different floral arrangements. The stamens of the flower can be dried and used to make a fragrant tea, and entire dried flowers are used in cooking. The American lotus likes to grow in shallow ponds and along the edges of slow streams that have clean water. It propagates from seed and root. The root is banana shaped and thick, sometimes reaching close to a foot long. When cut, it resembles a wagon wheel in appearance. Unlike many water lilies, the American lotus leaves are round and not split, with the stem attaching to the middle of the leaf. Some leaves are on the water, and some are above it. The lotus is a favorite water plant among fishermen because, unlike other water lilies, the lotus does not grab your fishing line or your lure. The unopened leaves are edible, like spinach, and older leaves can be used to wrap up your food. The stems taste somewhat like beets, and they're usually peeled before cooking them. Now, while the American lotus is not a day lily, it is a two-day flower. The blossoms open one day and they close for one night. Then they open the second day and then that evening all the petals will drop off. The center of the flower grows and gets to be about three inches across. It develops a seed pod with around 20 seeds and looks like a shower head. American lotus seeds have bloomed after 200 years some even 400 years, and in China, there were some that were viable after 1,200 years. The seeds can also be boiled down and made into a paste. When combined with sugar, it is often used in pastries. Lotus seeds range from about half an inch in length and a third of an inch wide. The inside of the seed has a hollow canal running end for end with a little sprout inside that is usually too bitter to eat when the seeds are mature. Mature seeds also have a good quality of oil and they can be popped. They can be eaten like peas when they're young. Uh, you want to boil them in ample water for 20 minutes, uh, push them out of their shell, and then add salt. And they're delicious that way. The plump green seeds when boiled taste similar to chickpeas with a little chestnut or corn flavor. Skinny seeds tend to be bitter. So if the cooked sprout in the seed is bitter, then just don't eat it. Or if you do eat it and it doesn't upset your stomach, then go ahead and enjoy it. It's not going to poison you. It's just not going to be very pleasant for some people. And the older seeds, you can take those and you can ground them to make flour. There are about 1,475 calories in one pound of lotus flour. Lotus flour is approximately 72% carbohydrate, 7.8% protein, 0.7% fat, 12.2% fiber, 4% water, and 3.3% minerals. Per 100 grams, there are about 63 to 68 grams of carbohydrate, which is mostly starch, 17 to 18 grams of protein, and only 1.9 to 2.5 grams of fat. The remainder is water, which is about 13%, and minerals. Uh, mainly the minerals are sodium, potassium, calcium, and phosphorus. Calories per 100 grams is somewhere around 350. It is also a good source of protein with one ounce serving of dried seeds giving you about 5 grams. The seeds are low in fiber and not a good source of vitamins, but are a good source of oil. Half-ripe seeds are delicious raw or cooked, and they taste a lot like chestnuts. Lotus root is sweet and can be eaten raw. You can slice it and stir fry it, or when you stuff it, it is similar to sweet potato. 
young lotus roots are good for salads, while the older, starchier roots are good for making soups. The root discolors quickly when you cut it, so you want to treat it like an apple or a pear. So as soon as you peel it and cut it up, you want to drop it into water with lemon juice or some sort of citric acid. It is often left to soak in water to reduce any of the bitterness. There are only two species of Nilumbo. One in the Americas is yellow and the one in Asia is pink. And it is probably second only to the cattail as far as usefulness and just how great of a plant this is that you can use it for so many different things. Uh, the roots can be buried very, very deep and they are best in the fall. And also the entire plant can be bitter. So while it is edible raw, it always tastes better when you cook it. All right, let's talk about the identification of the plant. It is a large plant, uh, showy yellow or pink flowers on long stems. The leaves are round. Uh, some will be floating and some will be hanging out of the water. The stem attaches to the middle back of the large leaf. The roots are best in autumn, but they can be eaten year round. The flowers in late spring or summer. Uh, later, if you're in a more northern climate, uh, June through September. It's found in shallow ponds, the edges of rivers, and basically any fresh, quiet water. So water that's not like raging. So if it's just a gentle flow, then there's a good chance that you can find the American Lotus there. Uh, there's numerous different methods of preparation of this plant. All parts of the plant, raw or cooked, can be uh, root seeds, unopened leaves, and stems. However, all parts are better when they're seeped in water and then cooked to reduce any bitterness. Uh, you can boil the plants like greens. Um, the seeds, you can boil them as well and squeeze them out of their shell. The dried flowers can be used for tea or added to soup. And lastly, the, the wilted leaves held next to a fire can be used to wrap food in for cooking. So say you catch a fish or something like that and you want to cook it, but you don't want ash all over it, then you can always take the wilted leaves and wrap the fish in those and lay it next to the fire to cook your fish in. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, the last thing I will say in this is always, 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 anytime you're going to forage a wild edible, always be 100% sure of the identification of the plant before consuming it. Now there are no poisonous varieties of this, so you got a pretty good shot with this one, but as always, you wanna make sure you know what you're eating before you eat it, that's kinda of common sense. So with that being said, thank you, I love you guys, appreciate you, and I will catch you on the next one. Until I speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye.